Hi, today we're gonna look at Splines 2.0, a new Splines tool package available in Unity. Okay, we look at how we can create splines, how things work inside this package, how we can spawn objects along the spline, and then we look at different ways to animate objects along the spline. So first we need to install the new splines package. For that, we'll go to Window, Package Manager, and then we'll go to Packages and select Unity Registry. And then we'll scroll down to Splines, and then hit install. If this is not visible to you for some reason, make sure you have updated your Unity editor to the latest version. So once it's installed, we'll close this window and yeah, let's get started. Essentially, there are two ways to create splines. The most boring way to create a spline is by adding the spline component. So I've created an empty game widget called spline and we'll add a component called spline. And now we can create as many splines as we want inside this single container. I'll just remove these for now. So I'll expand this and then we can add points to this curve. Now if you click somewhere else, you can see that a line is generated here. And then you can, you know, adjust the shape of the curve by manipulating these lines here. You can go to individual properties of each point like this. But that's the boring way to do it. The better approach, in my opinion, is to use the draw splines tool. We'll go to the hierarchy, right click, spline, draw splines tool. You can also select custom presets available and then edit it later. But for now, we'll go to draw splines tool. Now we can go to the scene and then click to create a curve of our desired shape. This is much more fast. So you can click to add control points in the curve. You can click and drag to adjust the curvature of that particular segment of our curve. Okay, we can move around the scene and then continue along with our curve. We can go back to normal by going out of spline edit mode by clicking this button here. So this button toggles the edit mode for splines. Okay, and when you're inside edit mode, you can also access the draw splines tool from here as well. Cool. So let's say you want to close this curve. So the way we close the curve is by going over to the inspector for this particular spline and then checking on closed and it automatically, you know, connects the dots. Okay, cool. So we can click on these control points and you can see there are a lot of options. Over here in the element inspector, you can see the position of this particular point. You can press F on the keyboard to zoom in on that point. You can also see the rotation and then you can see a couple of options. You have linear, auto and bezier. So let's see what each of these does. So I'll select this particular control point here and then I'll set it to linear. And you can see that there is a sharp cut in our curve. If you set adjacent control points as linear, you'll get a straight line in between them. So that's how you create straight lines in this curve. If you set it to auto, it's going to automatically smooth this curve. So you can click this point again and go to auto and now you can see that the line is smooth. If you set it to Bezier, it's not going to change anything, but it generates two handles here. These handles are called tangents. You can select one tangent and then move it to adjust the curvature of this segment. Okay. There are also different Bezier types. There is mirrored, continuous and broken. Broken literally means that A is not connected to B which means that I can move A wherever and however I want and it does not affect the other tangent. All right, so I can create a sharp cut like this if I wanted to. Continuous means both of these are connected. So if I move one, you can see that the other one moves as well and it generates a smooth curve. Broken does not necessarily mean that the curve will be smooth. In order to make a curve smooth, both of these tangents must make a straight line. Mirrored and continuous, both of these generate smooth curves, but the main difference is the length of the tangent. So both of these tangents would have equal length and they're mirrored in this plane, all right? That's essentially how mirrored works. So I have a spline here and I've created a test script to show you how things work in the code. So this is going to be really, really important. I'm going to write public spline spline and you need to be using unity engine dot splines namespace. Let's just save it and see what happens. If you add this component to the spline, you can see that it created a spline instead of creating a reference to the spline. So this won't work. 
most of the time unless you want a custom spline inside your component. So in order to get a reference, you shouldn't use spline, but instead you should use spline container. And now if we save it and go back to Unity, you can see that a field appears and then you can drag this spline into this container. I know it may be confusing. I don't know why Unity did it this way, but this spline component should actually be called spline container instead of spline. Otherwise, this would cause a lot of confusion for people who are new. Now we can access a lot of properties inside this spline. For example, spline dot, we can add a spline. There are also evaluate functions. So you can evaluate the position of the point inside a spline based on a particular ratio. So if you provide a float t, which is going to be a ratio, it's going to give you the position along that spline at that particular ratio. Similarly, you can evaluate tangent. You can also evaluate up vector. These are going to be useful when it comes to more complex mathematics. You can also get a list of splines by calling spline container dot splines. You can iterate through this splines list if you wanted to and then do additional filtering and then you know, do whatever you want to do. So the main takeaway is you need to use spline container to get a reference of the spline. And I think you can do everything else pretty easily because it's not too complicated here when it comes to the code, okay? Now let's see how we can spawn objects along a spline. I have created two prefabs, cube yellow and cube blue. I'm gonna delete them from the hierarchy and then I'm going to spawn it inside the spline. There is an easy way to do it and that is to add the spline instantiate component. And this is pretty straightforward. You have a list of items to instantiate and we can add to game objects and we can specify cube yellow and then cube blue but you cannot see cube blue immediately that is because you need to adjust this percent so i'm going to set it to 100 and cube yellow to 100 as well okay so it's going to spawn items randomly now we can change this distance you can even set this to a random between min and max you can also change this to let's say instance count or even linear distance however you want to and that is completely up to you. You can add position, rotation, and scale offset if you wanted to, and that's going to add more and more effects. It's awesome. All right, spline instantiate is a great tool. Now, how do we animate an object along a spline? So let's take this cube yellow. So there are two ways in which we can animate along a spline. One is to use the spline animate component, which is pretty good. It gets the job done quick and easy. The other way is to create a custom script. I'll show you both. Instead of the spline, we need to select the game object which we want to animate and then add spline animate component. And uh, here we're going to get a reference to the spline. If we hit play here on the editor, you can see how it will look. And that's exactly what we want. Let me just pause this for now. So basically you can deal with all of these properties. There's this option called play on awake. You can also have an offset. You can travel through time or through speed. It's up to you. I prefer using time. You can play around with these settings for yourselves and then work on animating your game object. You can also get the spline animate component and then do whatever you want with the code as well. Okay. But let's see how we can move an object along the spline just manually through custom code all right so i'm going to remove this and we're going to create our own custom script you can find the project files from the github repo link in the description and we're going to create this class called move along spline it's very simple it uses unit engine spline's namespace it contains a reference to the spline it has a float speed it also has a float distance percentage which is that ratio thing that I talked about when it comes to the evaluate methods. We also have a float for the spline length. At start, we just get the length of the spline by calling spline.calculate length. And inside update, we increment distance percentage by speed times time dot delta time divided by spline length. And speed into time is distance. We are calculating the distance percentage by saying distance divided by the length of the spline, which is going to give us a percentage value. And we're going to increment it by very small value every time. And that value is dependent on this variable speed. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And then we get the current position of the object by calling spline.evaluate position. And then we pass in this distant percentage. So we get the position of the game object this way. 
and then we set the position as current position as well and then we check if the distance percentage is greater than 1f which means that we have completed one loop so whenever this gets one this means that distance traveled will be equals spline length basically it means it completed one loop and that moment we set distance percentage back to 0f okay that's how we loop through this thing and then we can you know do our custom logic and then make changes whenever you want to then we find the next position at the spline by calling spline.evaluate position and then we pass in the distance percentage and then add a very small value all right the smaller the value the accurate the results and then we get the direction to that particular position and then we rotate the game object so that our current game object looks at the next position all right so that means our object will be rotated along the rotation of the spline okay cool so we just save it and see if it works hopefully it works so we'll go to cube yellow and then i'll add move along spline i'll drag in the reference of the spline and i'll set the speed to let's keep it at one let's move this object away so that we know it works and you can see it's too slow for us so i'll increase the speed and you can see that it loops seamlessly the downside of it is that it takes a lot of time to create other effects like easing in and out so yeah that's how we move an object along a spline unfortunately spline extrude is completely bugged at the moment and it is dangerous all right so let's go to the spline and then add a spline extrude and you can see that it already created a mesh for us and the thing is you cannot add custom meshes to extrude along the spline so i recommend using splines inside your 3d software like blender and then extruding it over there and then coming back to unity so if you try to change the mesh it actually changes the mesh file itself rather than creating you know an instance of this mesh so this process is not non-destructive it destroys your mesh completely you can create pipes all right that's the only thing that you can do but i recommend creating pipes in your 3d software all right that's going to work much better than creating splines with this method all right so i'm recommending you to stay away from spline extrude for now it may be updated in the future i'm not sure but yeah i don't find this as of much use compared to the other two components so that's it for this video and i hope you enjoyed it let me know what video you want to see in in the comments below if you're having any doubts join our discord server link in the description so yeah take care see you bye bye